Hi everyone, my name is Dave Luza and in this video I will be talking about one of the latest games of top designer Stefan Feld. The game is called Carpet Diem. It is one of two games that will be released at Essen 2018 by Stefan Feld and I really like games that he made in the past so I'm very excited to play this one. In this video first I'll tell you a bit about how the game works and at the end I'll tell you what I think of it. Carpe Diem is set in ancient Rome, 1 BC, and every player is putting tiles on their city district. You'll start here on the shovel space and from there on you'll move orthogonally, putting tiles down Carcassonne style, making sure that every side is always making sense and not touching sides that are not of the same kind. You will be finishing different kinds of areas, landscapes, uh, dwellings and villas trying to make points and getting resources. And why are you doing that? Well, of course, for points. There are two big ways of making points. The first one is scoring cards. At the end of each phase, and there will be four phases played in the game, you will put your marker in between two scoring cards. And that means that at this point only, you only will score these two cards. One type of scorecard will tell you that you need to have met certain requirements already built on your board and the other type of scoring card will tell you to give up resources that you've gathered. When you have put your score marker in between two scorecards, you score both cards. If you don't have the resources or do not meet the requirements for that scorecard, you lose four points for each card. But also, if you meet the requirements a couple of times, if you have built a certain type of building multiple times, you can get the reward twice or maybe thrice. Also, three bread tokens can substitute any requirement on any of the cards and you can use a combination of different things. So you can give up three grapes and three bread to get that prize twice. Coins in the game substitute any of the resources except for bread. So again, to this example, you could give up three grapes, three bread, and two coins and a grape to get that prize three times. Fountain cards give you points as well. When you place a fountain on the board, you take two fountain cards, choose one and give up uh, the other one, and that card will give you extra points at the end of the game for each time that requirement is met. But there's another reason to build a certain way. Each player district, each player board has a modular frame around it and that will give you a personal assignment to build certain tiles at certain points, making sure that the arrow that is on that card at some point crosses, well, those two fields that are depicted on it. And together that makes up for, well, I would say 30% of your scoring. So that's pretty important. Now, how do you get those tiles? The game board has a nice walk around the center of Rome. That's how I would like to <laughs> say it. Uh, right over here, at the beginning of the game, each player puts their worker on one of those seven blueprint spots. And after that, you will seed the game with the game tiles that will go right on over here. When it's your turn, you need to move your worker. And they move following these lines. So if my worker is right over here, he can move to either this place or this place and then subsequently take a tile from that and put it on the board. Players can be on the same spot, that's no problem. And if the spot that you wanna to go to is already empty, then you can just move along the same way or even go back to the first one so you get one tile of that. Seven turns, seven steps, every player gets seven tiles. You get bonuses if you complete certain kinds of buildings. The first one is the administrator. If you complete a dwelling, a gray colored dwelling, then you get two steps on the banderol bar. Why that's important, I'll tell you in a second. The other one is the bakery. If you complete a bakery, you get two bread. The other one is market. If you fill that one, you get two coins, great. And the last one is green. I would say it's an architect. I don't know the term right now, but you'll get an extra tile to put down on your board. You will not fill out the whole board. Well. Maybe, but um, not probably. So getting an extra tile, well, that's just more stuff. But there are also landscapes, four types. You have a hen house and a hen area, which is brown. The green one where you'll put your salads in. 
Purple one is for wine purposes, so you've got grapes. And the blue ones is where you get your fishes from. Every time you fill out one of those areas, you'll get the amount of tiles you used for that area minus one in resources of that kind. There are three buildings that give you a one-time bonus. First one is a small bakery, which will give you one bread. The other one is a fountain tile, which gives you special ways of making extra points. And the market, well, you will get one coin. And then there are all these red tiles. Those are villas. And villas are good for maybe some score tiles, but mostly for the end of the game, where you're gonna count the chimneys for each villa that you have finished. I want to circle back to the scoring cards because each spot between those cards can only be used once. So if you've got your eyes set on a certain spot, then watch out that someone else not swoops in and takes that spot from you. And how do you mitigate that? How are you making sure that you'll be the one to put down your marker first? Well, we've got the banderol bar for that. If you finish an administrator dwelling, then you get two steps on that. And if you want to put a tile on your board, but there's one of those small markers already there, you'll get one step as well. And the person who is in front on top, because it's a felt game, he, he loves it that way. If you're in front and on top, you get to be the first one to put his marker down at the end of this phase. And time and again, that has proven to be very useful. Well, I think that's about it. That's how you play the game. If you have any questions, then please ask. And uh, if I made some mess of the rules, then please tell me so I'll, I'll put some notes in it. But this is how the game works. I really enjoy playing Carpe Diem. There are some very cool mechanics. I like the scoring cards that you put a marker in between it and just score those two cards for yourself. I really like building tiles, putting tiles on my board, this puzzle. I, I really enjoy that, having the modular frames. That works great for me. There's a lot of interaction going on because you're constantly looking at other players. Of course, you've got the problem that if you have an AP prone player like I have in my Monday night gaming group, that is not good because there's you cannot really plan ahead. You can have a, a general idea of things you want to do, but in the end, you'll just have to wait until it's your turn before you can start thinking, which I don't mind because I love uh, um, acting on the fly. Think, oh, I can do that, then I'll do that. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty quick at that. But if you've got people who want to think things over and they can only start thinking when it's their turn, well, that could be a thing right there. There is a take that element to the game as well, because when you're choosing your scoring tiles, you don't only look at your own board, but you're also trying to see what the other players have and how to screw them over while getting the most points for yourself as well. So that might be something that might turn you off. It didn't turn me off. I, I did like that. Some other things though that I think Huh, that is too bad. Let me, let me tell you about them. First off, the walking around. The workers, they walk in a weird way to the opposite side of the board and then they go that in this weird cross-like shape. Why is that? The first thing I thought is, wait, my worker can go to two points and from there on he can go to two points and from there on you go to two points. That's a circle, right? And someone on Board Game Geek thought the same thing and explained it way better than I did it right now. So if you want to check that out, check it out on Board Game Geek. You can just walk in a circle. Why is there this convoluted way of looking where to go? But if you end up there, where can you go next? Just walk around in a circle. It doesn't change gameplay at all. It just makes it easier. It's just way easier to, to look around and see, oh, if this M is empty, I can just move over to the next uh, blueprint tile to get my tiles over there. You always have two ways to go. That's something that I, I couldn't believe, but the author, Mr. Feld himself, wrote in that Board Game Geek article that he didn't see that while designing the game. So that means I'm smarter than Mr. Feld? <laughs> I'm excited now. Let me talk a bit about the production of the game. Uh, the game comes with two separate bags of tiles. One are light green on the backside and one is dark green on the backside. I can see the difference. 
I can see what is meant, but not everyone is has got these great eyes that I have, and I know it's difficult to see. I can see that. But every time I take the game out and people look at it and say, what, how, how is that possible? Why would they, I know, I know. Why would you make it that hard for people to differentiate the tiles from the back? It doesn't matter what they look like on the back. You could just put blue, purple, or mark on that backside. That would not have been a problem at all. Why would you do this to us? Another thing about the colors is you've got the bakery that is brownish and you've got the merchant that is yellowish, the dwellings, and you've got a printer, you're using a printer, that mixes those colors up somehow. I don't know why, I don't know how, but get your things in order. This is not okay. You've got an orangey tile that should be yellow. You've got a brownish tile that kind of looks orange. You can only see that they're different tiles when they are really next to each other. That's not okay. Use your colors better. Ah, oh, man, I'm really annoyed about it. And w when I'm starting to get annoyed, other things annoy me. Why? Why would you call a banderole bar a banderole bar? It feels to me like it's a bad way of using words. It's a scroll. I can see it. If you want to make a banderole, make it look like a banderole. What's going on here? You've got your A, B, C, D type of scorecards that you use in the game. There's a code printed on the back of it. I know what that code means because it took me a while before I could break that code, but why is there a code on how many tiles, how many of those cards would you use? I've got the rule book, I already knew how many I would need for that, but no, in a two player game, you use two cards. In a three player game, you use two cards. In a four player game, you use three cards. I know now what it means, but why is it on there? It does not make sense. Stop doing that to me. <sighs> I'm sorry, this is my very first official review. I've, I've talked about games before in videos, but I've never done an official review. I was so excited when I got it in the mail and I thought, yes, this is the game I'm gonna do my first review about. I didn't think it would end like this, but look at it. I mean, it's, it's great. It's got a picture on it that, uh, is this Rome 1 BC? I don't, I don't know. If you're gonna make a Stefan Feld game, just put his name on the box and the title. Don't put anything else on it. If you're not gonna spend money on it, then might as well not even do this. In 10 years time, because I know there is a game in here. In 10 years time, restoration games are gonna have a, a huge hit on their hands when they overproduce this. If they put put some some cool stuff in it and make it look great, look make the the art of the the game board make that look better, but not like this. There's bread in the game. This is not how you depict bread on a token. It's just not. My name is Dave Luja. If you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel. If you didn't like this video, then please subscribe to my channel because not all my videos are like this. But thanks for watching. Bye.